Ok, let's start the simulation now. So we have some pressure drop and based on the orifice equation certain mass law will be calculated through restriction component. In the simulation step we also have several pains like single calculation, multi-calculation, run overview, job overview and common model compiler. In single calculation we are running only one case and this is also the situation now. In the multi-calculation we are running several cases at the same time, time and on the run overview and job overview we are seeing what is happening in the background. Common model compiler is used if we want to compile models to different interfaces like ETAS, DSpace, Integrio, NIVeristand and others. We will now only start a single calculation. I pressed on the run button and I need to wait a few seconds. The status is now running and there is also a progress bar. Because the model is so simple, the 10 seconds are basically calculated instantly. Whenever the status is completed, I can move to result step, which is meant for the post-processing. Also here we have several panes, report tree, data viewer, data browser. This is the default location of those three panes. I usually place data browser here and close the empty space, increase the size here and then saving under AVL automatically. So I have a report tree where we have basically a tree structure of our uh, pages and data browser where I can browse through different uh, channels that I want to plot. The data viewer is constructed uh, for visualization of different charts. We can or we usually use a line chart, maybe table uh, for engine application. If I have line chart, um, usually I divide the whole uh, data viewer pane into several sections. So I'm using these bottom uh, splitters, horizontal and vertical splitter. So I have four line charts on one single page. How can I post process? I have here a model structure or a project structure. This is a project name. This is a model name. Case set name will be explained slightly different and one simulation means one case and this is this one. If you press on the case one we have here in the middle part of the pane all of the components that are inside the model plus circuits and solver which are always here. Usually I would always like to see what is happening with my mass flow. Restriction itself has basic information but the mass flow is basically calculated for the upstream and downstream direction. Upstream direction indicates the flow going uh, in the same direction pointed by these triangular pins. So when the flow goes from the system boundary 1 to system boundary 2, these are upstream directions. So under upstream I, I can have or I can choose here a mass flow inside. We will see that the calculated mass flow is around 0.3 kg per second. We can also change the units if we want. But the simulation time is 10 seconds. So the x-axis is always dependent on the actual simulation time. If I want to check if the pressure conditions are really as we specify them, I go to system boundary 1 and 2, I can plot uh, at the same time the same channel from both of the components. So I click on system boundary 1 using a control to system boundary 2 and plotting pressure inside. Here I really see that system boundary 1 has uh, 110,000 pascals while system boundary 2 only 100 pascals. If you would like to read exactly the number of values you can click on the show data reader and also use a, a slider to move uh, through the simulation time to see their actual values. Because system boundary has a constant values, this value is not changing. This is the same for the mass flow because simply we have constant pressure conditions and based on that also constant mass flow. In the engine model this will always um, uh, 
go up and down but here we have a constant characteristic if we want to add the values in the table we can click here on the table and usually just drag and drop mass flow in the table there is also other way uh, how to do that inserting a table and the report tree can have several pages plus several line charts as it has it here the idea is that we can also copy the curves from the line chart and pasting them into the table from the application point of view for example our measurements are not 0 0.3 kilograms per, sec per second as it is predicted by the restriction component let's say that our measurements gives us 0 0.2 kilograms per second in this case we have to calibrate the model slightly for that purpose we are using flow coefficient of restriction block we can change the values here so we can always try something run the simulation and see what is the uh, what is the result that we have I will currently add another block inside the model I will add constant block under base control and data this constant block has following inputs it's really a constant and I will specify here desired mass flow through restriction specifying the unit if I open this drop down menu we basically see all of the units that are possible within CRUZEM environment usually I don't scroll and look for appropriate one I basically just write whatever I want to see for example kg divided by s divided by second so that means mass flow I need to select here kilograms per second under the mass flow and my desired value will be 0 0.2 so if I run the simulation now uh, I will also add this value to the post-processing so I will see where I am again I can move to results tab when the status is completed after each simulation the results will be automatically updated so I go to now the constant block and I will put desired mass flow inside the same line chart where I have a mass flow of my restriction so I still see that I am uh, that I am uh, far away that's why I would use a calibration factor of restriction which is flow coefficient flow coefficient A and flow coefficient B are used for different purposes flow coefficient A for the upstream flow that means flow from the system boundary 1 to system boundary 2 and flow coefficient B from the opposite direction from system boundary 2 to system boundary 1 if we want we can also use this drop down menu and say that the flow coefficient B is the same as A that means the restriction will behave exactly the same regardless of the direction of the flow the flow coefficient basically reduces the active area for the orifice equation if we take a look at the documentation once again how this looks like under theory we see that the mass flow that is used is basically a linear characteristic of a flow coefficient and reference cross-section which is defined either by reference cross-section or it is calculated based on the diameter input further parts of the equation are basically pressure and temperature conditions on the upstream side and there is also a flow function flow function is uh, consists of the information about the specific heat ratio this is kappa value and pressure on the upstream and downstream side if we reduce the flow coefficient we will also in the same pressure conditions and kappa values we will get smaller mass flow that means because we have to achieve smaller mass flow we will reduce this value by some factor I will say 0.7 of course this is now a trial and error which is usually not used I just want to go slowly to the actual um, application point of view 
Under results, we see now that the actual mass flow reduced quite. So I'm already very close. So now I can also change again and look to the results, but there, there are better ways to do that. One thing I need to explain first is also the monitor component. The monitor component is placed under the components, base control and data. So if I place monitor component inside and open its properties, the only important thing is under data bus definition. Here I have input and output channels. Input channels are the one that I will observe during the simulation. I will have desired mass flow in units of kilogram per second. Here the default minimum and maximum values are not important. They are important for the output section of the monitor. And I will also select here actual mass flow through restriction in kilogram per second. When this is done, these are the channels that I will censor during the simulation. Monitor doesn't have any physical connection. All of the signals are coming from the signal exchange. All of the signal exchange is done via data bus connection pane. By default, it is hidden. That's why we can activate under the panes. So click on the pane, data bus connections. The data bus connection logic is following. Whenever I select one of the component, it is automatically also selected in the first column element 1. We see here that we defined two different channels, desired mass flow and actual mass flow in the second column. So if I click on desired mass flow, I can define now from where this mass flow will come from. Desired mass flow was set up in the constant block. So I will say monitor 1 desired mass flow channel we will gain information from the constant block as desired mass flow. Now you can also see if I undo, you will basically see that we have these diagonal pins which indicates a signal flow. If I undo and undo means uh, they are disconnected, you see that both of the diagonal pins are not colored with any uh, color, they are white. If I redo, the connection is established again and you see now that they are, uh, that the connection is established. If I hover over the gray area, I can see that from where the channels are going to. And in monitor case, from where the channel is obtained. The same can be done for the second channel, for the actual mass flow. This can be done to connect to a restriction block. So the actual mass flow through the system will come from restriction 1 as an upstream mass flow. So now we have two mass flows in the monitor and this is what we can observe online during the simulation. We can go to simulation step and under single calculation I will press on the curve monitor. Right click on the curve monitor to open this dialog. There are several channels that I can observe. I will add desired one and actual one. Usually I'm selecting both of the channels and selecting the minimum and maximum limitations to custom so that I can really check or to change the minimum and maximum x, uh, y axis. In my case this is 0 and 0 0.3. I can change a unit and I also I can change a color. So for the desired mass flow it will be black one for example and actual one with a red color. So I can press on run and now I will be able to see what is happening during the simulation. So I'm not necessarily need to go to result step each time. Now we see that we are really close. And now I will also show you the output section of the monitor. If I open properties of the monitor once again, under output section I can define the channels that I will change during the simulation. This will be flow coefficient A. So I will change flow coefficient A of restriction component during the simulation. 
the unit group of flow coefficient is ratio without any unit. Outputs needs information about the default minimum and maximum limitation. Flow coefficient always go from 0 to 1 and this is exactly what I will have to specify for minimum and maximum. The default value is the value used in the first simulation time step. Because I, s I saw that the 0 0.7 uh, for the flow coefficient gives me very very good correlation, I will start with this value. Now I will have to specify that flow coefficient that the flow coefficient A is coming from the monitor block. I can always hover over the flow coefficient A input and specify data bus. That means that the information will come from the data bus channel. As you can see now the red cross appeared over the restriction component. And this is because one of the required channels, flow coefficient A, which needs to now come from somewhere, uh, is not connected. And because it is not connected, we see that we have red cross. This red cross is basically an indication of the data checks. We are checking some of the uh, inputs. Uh, for example, we also are checking uh, the temperature should not be lower than 0 kelvins. So we also are checking some plausibility of our inputs. All of the data check errors are shown in this dialog. Currently it says that the system in system restriction 1 port flow coefficient A must be connected. If I press on this message, it automatically goes to the data bus connection pane and highlight which channel needs to be connected. Whenever I have a red cross, I will not be able to run a simulation. So the flow coefficient A will come from the monitor block flow coefficient A. If I run simulation, nothing will, nothing will happen because simply or 0 0.7 value will be taken as a default and it will also be used during the simulation. One advantage of the monitor is that we can uh, again define a slider. So I divide screen uh, vertically, add a slider, right click on the slider and add this output uh, section of the monitor component flow coefficient A. Everything should be automatically defined. That means minimum, maximum and default value should be automatically uh, selected and defined. If I click on the run, I will be able to change the slider during the simulation. So if I want to change something with the slider, you see that basically I was too slow. The simulation of 10 seconds is simply too fast. For that purpose I will return back to the system, uh, to the home tab and under the system we have settings where we also have the end of time input. I can always click here and select infinite. That means that simulation will run forever and I will be able or I will have enough time to change flow coefficient A during the simulation clicking on run once again and now I can really change this uh, dependent on the simulation time. If I increase the flow coefficient also the mass flow will increase. If I decrease the flow coefficient the mass flow will decrease. So I want to use a slider to find appropriate flow coefficient. So I can see that the appropriate flow coefficient is 0 0.67 for my specific case. Whenever simulation is running forever, I can always stop the simulation in order to not be really calculated in the background. Now, with this part, the monitor component is finished.